Okay. Zero. Zero. Kill him, man. I'm a doctor. I take care of you. Tenno Yang. Tenno Yang. Please excuse me. But I have never seen a black man before. Not this close. I've read about your people. Let me show you. Do you know this man? He ain't personal friends, but I've seen that book. He's a very interesting man. Lately, I've been trying to learn about your people. You are oppressed in your country. But I'm curious, why do you fight for the system that holds you down? So you drafted my sorry behind. Drafted? Sort of like legal slavery. Yes, exactly. And that is an irony of this war that I will never understand. How a lumpen proletariat, descendant of the slaves, can be induced to give up their lives to protect the capital of the ruling class. You some kind of communist or something? Yes, since 1952. Damn, I don't think I ever talked to a real communist before. Nor have I ever spoken to a black American. Really? We have much to learn from each other. He wants me again, huh? Look, I'm just a private. I don't know nothing to tell him. Be sick. Close your eyes. Be sick. I told him you're near death and cannot be questioned now. Thanks, Doc. What do you think, you gophers or something? Yes, that is us. The tunnels are one of the means by which we will win this war. Your generals have not yet even begun to understand their importance. Tell me something. Why do you want to fight America anyway? For the same reason we fought the Japanese when they occupied during the Second World War and the French when they occupied later. Vietnam is our country, our land. Our business is our business. And you are a foreign power who has no business in our affairs. But enough of that. You were telling me about... I was telling you about the Black Death. Put your hand up here. It's real simple. Only gets complicated when white folks try to do it. Hey, dog. <laughs> He might didn't have a choice, but you got a choice right now. Don't move. Let me live. Please. You can let me go right now, Doc. You ain't got to do this. You'll never know. I can just take right off. Come, 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 you acquire the pro kid. Did a hell of a job on Shenway today. It was easy switching those rocks. I wonder if this rock of his is real. Who knows? Maybe I really am the wish child. Yeah, maybe you are that. Just gotta keep it going a little while longer. Sit tight. How did you handle that MacGyver guy? He shipped out to New Zealand. Hmm, nice touch. No body, no cops, no noise. Diplomatic. Lock, stock, and phony rock. Kid was great. Mr. Lee made contact. He's interested. I'll meet him, set up a deal, we'll have the money, and be rid of a kid. How? He won't be coming back. Got something special for you, kid? Whoa! I told you, good things are coming. Rich things. Yeah. 
Wait till Lisa sees the karate studio I'm gonna buy her. She'll stop thinking I'm some kind of loser. Hey, everybody's gonna respect you, Paul. Everybody. You are the wish child. You know, sometimes I think, maybe what if I was? Both know you're special, Paul. That's why it's gonna be great from now on, right? <laughs> he does that. He's done it to me dozens of times. Just dozes off in mid-sentence. And his noise. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here, try some. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that you can help me and my client out here, Dr. Lou. Wish I could. I like Irwin. But I'm afraid I was in here working when Vincent was killed. I'm no help at all. Mm. It's good. Made it myself. The ultimate junk food. No salt, no fat, no sugar, no calories, and no food value. What's in them? Not much. Hmm. Tastes good. If the Food and Drug Administration weren't so hysterical about possible health risks, I would have had them on the market years ago. Here, have some more. I guess I can't offer you a cup mm. of coffee. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chow, I didn't even hear you come up. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I know, it's my fault. I have a million miles away. Um, Helen Lee tells me you're investigating the death of Steve Burkow? Yeah, we are. I knew him. Actually, I just recently met him. What were you doing with Steve? It's a secret. I can only tell those who I trust. Well, he's more trustworthy than a cop. Steve Burkow was a cop. You know, it's not a, a good day for playing games, so I think that maybe we should talk about this inside the PD. Yes, we could, or we can do this over dinner. Either way, I'll tell you what I know. Are you hitting on me? Yes. Cass? It's a habit. Thank you for coming. Um, bad experience in a department store? Oh. <laughs> I'm proud to be a fourth degree black belt. As you'll see, requires diligent training. Mm-hmm. Excuse me for a moment. Sure. Boys, the series premieres Friday. What you want to bet Krieger Ghost wrote this stuff about the guy's kinky thing with the rifles? That's pretty deep for the LT. Who the hell is LT? Who is this Chanel Corey with all the answers anyway? Well, she ain't one of the department shrinks. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You better be cool, Morrissey. That's like opening U.S. mail, man. Well, neither rain nor the dark of night deters LT from his Thursday meeting with the mysterious Chanel Corey. 
So, he's talking to his source. Yeah. Every week, according to this. So what? Hey, I'm just giving you the facts. Yeah, we'll present them outside the cage. For assault. Pounded a homeboy into the pavement in front of his house. I just found out Dwyer's got a restricted driver's license. Night blindness. Which makes him one of two things. Either he's a very lucky shot, or he's innocent. Culver and Gannon. What color cars? Beige 84 Chevy White Escort. Gotta hand it to you, LT. Dwyer's was navy blue. All right, tail him. Larson and Wheeler on Gannon. Key and Cruz, you take Culver. Um, I've got a meeting with Crush. Look, he wants to take the turn. I said play along. What the hell are you guys talking about? Oh, Larson's found some homeboy with a heart of gold. Look, Crush wants out of the scene. I'm asking him to trust me, and I've got to trust him in return. Yeah, right. Larson, look, the number one rule in the sets is loyalty, right? You think he's going to toss it to you? No way. He already has by talking to me. Well, the number one rule in narc work is don't blow your cover. Look, you don't know this guy. Oh, come on. Nobody knows anybody, Larson. What's going on? We're entering the Liberator region, Doctor. What is it? Fiji. It's an aircraft, Doctor. Japanese? It's nationalists. They're looking for Japanese. <laughs> Although sometimes they appear to be surveying us. You were lucky to have salvaged anything from the train, Doctor. Do we reach shore? How much further will it be, Mr. Tuck? About 1,500 miles. You've been in this line of work a long time. I'm not an interpreter by profession, Doctor. I'm an economist. I've only been asked to accompany you to the A through Army headquarters in Yanang, where I will receive another assignment. It will be a relief to get out of this nationalist uniform. This is Chairman Ma. Huayin, Huayin. Bye, Dai Fu. Chairman, welcome you, Doctor. Ah, Changtu Ba Shi, Yi Lu Xin Ku Lo. You've had a long journey. The long march was a long journey, long and difficult and great. I want you to tell me how I can best serve the Aethred Army. Uh, this is the border region of Qingchaqi. There are 30 million people with less than 100,000 of Aethred Army and armed partisans. Our main guerrilla activities are conducted from the Wutai Mountains, northeast of Peking, over a thousand miles from here. There are only a few. Chairman Mao appoints you medical advisor to the Aethro Army in charge of all hospitals and medical units in the liberated areas. We are like fish in the ocean of the people. To defeat us, the Japanese will have to destroy the entire ocean 
and that they'll never be able to do. And when the Japanese are defeated? Then we'll turn all our energies into building a better world. I remember that. What a curious expression for Marxist revolutionary. What did I say? Amen to that. Oh, my mother is a missionary. She said, because her father was a missionary. Aren't we all? A decade after ascending the throne, King Ying Zhen fights for his life and for a dream to forge a new nation, China. Many great kings before him have tried and all have failed. But this time will be different. Because Ying Zhen is different. The youngest king to lead his nation into war. He is its greatest warrior. A visionary leader burning with ambition. If anyone can unify China, it is him. The Qin army has taken over 10,000 prisoners. The rules of war are explicit. Prisoners must be cared for. And the day is yours! And this is yours! But that would slow down his campaign. You want to know what to do with it? What is it? The royal sheaves of mission, Majesty. The ones used by military commanders. I strongly recommend that we put all palace and regional forces on high alert. Really? Lao Hai has disappeared. It seems he may have taken the seals. If he is able to mobilize troops, the state could be at risk. Why would he do that? Why would a Marquis threaten us? What could he hope to achieve? I don't know, Majesty. What would a eunuch do with a throne? Even if he had it, who on earth would he leave it to? Eunuchs don't have successes, do they, Lu Wei? Except, of course, this one does. Two pretenders to the throne, courtesy of my mother. Some eunuch! I thought years ago he was castrated on your orders, I believe. I find the man responsible if I were you and have words with him. Now, if you don't mind, I think we have a rebellion to crush. <laughs> 